What is up, ladies and gents? Hello and welcome to ROG Pulse, the weekly show where we dive into all things tech and gaming. Whitson, I don't know why you got shrunk down. You, you're muted. And I'm mini size. Yeah, you're mini. You're mini. We'll fix that in a minute. That's okay. But hi, guys. Welcome. This is our weekly podcast where we jump in and talk about the tech world. We talk about video games, talk about all that kind of juicy news. And it's been a juicy week as both the AM5 launch event was this past weekend and Computex 2022 is ongoing where we've unveiled things like 500 hertz monitors and some pretty cool stuff that we'll be talking about very soon. Whitson, let me let me resize you, but what is me. new, my friend? I'm gonna, as soon as I resize you, it's going to go back to make you larger again. Just wait for it. <laughs> then it'll just be my face. Uh, things are going well. I like, I just, I had, I didn't game for like two weeks cause I was having some back problems, Savage. but I just went back to Elden Ring last night, had, had a hell of a time beating a man. What's that, that scorpion thing at the bottom of the lake of rot. That thing was a beast. The um, scorpion thing at the bottom of the lake of rot. Is I forget what it's called. No, it's like rainbow. It's kind of trippy. Star beast. Maybe. Nah, I don't know. his name's like, I'll have to look it up. I'll look it up for you. So I know it's on oh, my phone. I do know who you're talking about. That guy. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, there's At a the few end of, of Randy's them. quest line. There, so there's a few of them? No. There's a few of them. And one of them has a, it's a fully grown one. The other ones are like babies. And there's a Castle fully. Natural born of the void. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. There are these things called like star beasts or something. They're also like scorpion tails. Um, they're like uh, stone hide. And one of them's like fully grown, and that guy oh, was hard. Look, scorpions are my least favorite creature. Why'd you like, go to the desert the, like I last week, man? The scariest man, creature out with on earth. <laughs> scariest creature. I don't know. Gators and and and, and sharks are are. It's true. Gators are basically dinosaurs, which is pretty scary. But scorpions are just like other. They're like dinosaur bugs with that tail and mm. all the legs and the uh, and pinchers. They have everything. They have everything. They are. They have an arsenal of weapons. Um, yeah, uh, scary creature. Eric, what have you been jamming, my friend? What have you been playing? You, you know, I almost feel like I'm confessing this at a point. Uh -oh. Like it's reached <laughs> uh -oh. the level of, uh, you know, like I need a support group. But uh, I'm back to Valheim. Can we do a digital high five? Digital you, high five, dude. Because because when when uh, oh. if you didn't, you probably don't know this, but when I had COVID. My wife and I had to isolate, you know, in our own home. And the way we dealt with that was we made new Valheim characters. And we got completely re-addicted. And I've now passed 550 hours in that stupid game. I call it stupid <laughs> because it, it just takes hold of my life because my wife gets home from work and she's like, she's like, what do you want to do? She's like, it's not a question. We're playing Valheim. I'm like, all right. <laughs> um, I have yeah. to say, though, like, while there hasn't been, I feel like, a big marquee sort of addition since I last played, the raft of just quality of life improvements and adjustments, particularly to uh, food, has really kind of made the game feel fresh and different for me. It's It's been fun diving back in. So we, we have a, like a four-stack squad that we're playing with, and we're able to basically prioritize different play styles for each player. Um, I'm going range with the bow. We've got someone playing a tank where you have, like, um, the, the, sing the the smaller shield, the buckler, which you can parry with. And then he also rocks a tower shield for like crowd control. And it actually feels like, like we're like, you know, mathing it out and like treating this game like a hardcore, like let's go dungeon crawling with a, with a squad. We've got one person with a two hand weapon. We've got like this whole team built out where the four of us are like, you know, spelunking and we're, we're now going through the new mountain caves uh, which is really good content. Like it's content that oh. wasn't there before and we're really enjoying it, but I could do a whole Valheim podcast. I'm going to stop myself on, on, from, from doing that <laughs> because I, I really put a lot of time into that game. But um, what last question I'll ask you about Valheim, like where are you guys biome wise? Uh, Black forest, not that far. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys are just getting rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, they, they, they've added a bunch of, a bunch of new armor sets and, and creatures and stuff. So, uh, it's pretty exciting. And they, in fact, just teased 
um, new crafting station and stuff for the next zone, the next biome, Mislins. They just teased it yesterday. Um, so the devs are, are hard at work with that game. There's going to be future content coming soon. Um, it's one of those games that is early access, but still feels like there's a lot to do. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm eagerly awaiting future content for that. Just kind of speaking of other gaming news that we can dive straight into before we get into our tech news for today. Right as we were going live, I looked at my phone and I saw that No Man's Sky has a patch called Leviathan. I didn't even write it in my mm-hmm. notes for Sounds this, awesome. but there's a new video called No Man's Sky and the Leviathan. So that's... Yeah, they... that's pretty fascinating, isn't it? Adding a uh, kind of a rogue light sort of mode to the game oh, is Oh, is that what that is? I didn't actually yeah. click on the link yet. Oh, that's really cool. But it, it seems to be more kind of uh, community-based, if I've read correctly. You know, dying kind of takes you back to the start, but your progress kind of gives you access to fancier toys every time you go back through the loop. Wow. And the ultimate reward? Space whale. Space? Do you, like, get to ride it? <laughs> yes. Rideable space whale. All right. Well, I That's am, the dream. I have to play I, the game now, yeah. I mean... That's the yeah. opposite of Scorpion's. Per- I mean, I feel that's on everybody's bucket list, right? Like you wrote that out, like in third grade, I want to ride <laughs> right on a freaking space whale. It can hyper jump, <laughs> right? It, the pergil, basically, which is like, the space whales in the Star Wars universe. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's exciting. I'm very intrigued to hear that it's a roguelite mode because I did not anticipate that. All right. There was a lot of gaming. You have a lot of gaming news on I, this. I put Jake. a lot of different uh, little, we go little it first. Let's just and then talk let's just, about yeah. Let's check. bounce through the gaming news really quick. So, yeah. um, just some reports coming out about PS5 titles that have come to PC performing very well. Uh, so we're, yes. we're this is something that Sony is going to yes. be really excited about. They're going to be really happy with the sales on, on God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, etc. Um, so, you know, I do expect that we will ultimately see more of these titles coming to PC and the PC platform soon. Personally, um, you know, I, the last of us is in, in Spider-Man are the two that I'm like really rooting for. I want to, I want to bring see. me pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> That's what I have to say. Hey, about Jonah, that. um, pizza time, but that, I mean, that's, that's just really, really exciting news in general because, um, uh, I mean, I bought a PS5 because I got sick of waiting for these for these releases. I'm sure that a lot of these titles will still be PS5 first, like God of War, Ragnarok. I'm sure that will will be PS5 first and then delayed launch on PC because Sony profits. They have a higher profit uh, per sale when it's on the platform that they own. Um, right. But it's still just great for PC games. But I'm curious how long the delay will be because the delay for God of War and Horizon were a long time, but that was like right when Sony first started doing PC games. So the delay was long because not because they wanted the delay to be five years necessarily for those games, but they decided five years later, we're going to start releasing things on PC. So what's their like ideal delay? When are we going to see Ragnarok? When are we going to see, you know, the next Spider-Man game, Wolverine, etc.? I'm very curious. I'm, I'm going to guess anywhere between nine to 18 months will be the delay. That's my hope. Yeah. My hope it's only that much. Cause if it's only that I can wait nine to 18 months. Yeah. I can't wait five years. I think that's um, a healthy margin, right? I think so too, but we'll see. That's usually when you start to see pretty hefty price drops on those games in the Sony store anyway, right? Like after a year or two, they're down to like 20 bucks, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that, yeah. So it seems like a good time to bring into PC. And if they continue to do it with DLSS and other like PC features, get some RTX in there, I'm in. I'm so in. Also, God of War was a particularly good port in the sense that you could actually push the graphics farther than you could, than, than PS5 was capable of. It was like surprisingly awesome, surprisingly good uh, PS5 controls too. But yeah, just the way that they, they talking about the graphics, like you just mentioned, the way that they conveyed that in the menu, they had like regular, yeah. regular was oh, like the baseline so nice. because that's like what PS5 graphics or PS4 graphics were. And then there were, it was beyond that. Which is... And Microsoft has done, Microsoft didn't do quite that, but they did have like officially released, you know, they, they listed for Digital Foundry what the exact graphic settings were for the Series X and Forza Horizon 5, mm-hmm. right? So that you could go get those settings and then move up where you wanted to. I like it when console manufacturers do that or when game developers do that. Same. Let me know what the console, but at the same time, I also don't, 
I, I prefer to go for whatever the most optimized settings are on PC. Like I will leave some settings lower than console if it allows me to push other stuff higher that's more noticeable. That could be a whole episode of Pulse. It could. It could. In fact, it is one that we have on the list. It's literally marked down as an option for day. when we need to do something <laughs> different. Um, Eric, were you the one that wrote in the Call of Duty message? No, I, um, I, I wrote that in. I just want to note that uh, apparently that's coming on my birthday, which feels what? like a sign from the heavens. Happy birthday. Are you a big COD fan? Um. Well, not really. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it even better. Um, I'm I'm sorry. Just the the hyper realistic, um, you know, shooter dude, sort of world. Dude, don't apologize. I, I'm, I'm I, the exact same boat. I want to I want a dose of fantasy in my gaming. I want sci-fi. Always. That's so the kind of fellow I am. This is funny. This is why I, when it comes to Call of Duty, I tend to prefer the modern or futuristic call yes. of duties like black ops 3 or advanced warfare or games like that because there's like a little bit of a sci-fi element uh, um and I, I i don't i don't enjoy personally like the world war ii ones as much and stuff see that's the one that i like better it's it oh, feels really? older and it feels like you know history in a way right it feels like i'm playing yeah history. i'm not so a history that, buff oh, okay that because that, that, that intrigues me a little bit but the ones that are modern day i have no interest in oh i, um, I like them yeah. i have not played the original like or not the original I haven't played the Modern Warfare reboot yet, yeah. but it's on my list. And yeah, I'm excited they're making a second one because, I mean, Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 are yeah. some I mean, of the best Call of Duty titles. They're, the they're popular games decades. for a reason. Um, yeah. Speaking on like the shooter realm, uh, Apex Legends Mobile has dropped. Yeah, um, and it's supposed to be quite good. Yeah. I mean, so if you are a fan of mobile, if you've got yourself a nice, sweet, sweet ROG phone... Oh, power hey. up some yeah i gotta get my kunai to apex work. legends on it look what you have just handy and sitting there i i use it every day yeah i love it the battery life on this thing is insane the battery life and the 144 hertz display are my favorite part it's a beast <laughs> it is a beast so uh, question for you are we actually entering a world where mobile games are don't throw things at me good i mean yes Here's the thing. We've always had good mobile games. It's just that what is immensely popular and what is good to a certain group of people like us might be different things, right? Um, and there definitely was a period where, like, where you had this drop in premium single-player mobile games, and it, I think the industry kind of overcorrected into certain types of free-to-play games, and I feel like we've we've reined that in a little bit especially with more like console pc games coming to mobile like PUBG, like apex legends like well, call of duty mobile it's, it's been really fun watching these popular pc titles uh, basically get adapted to mobile it's not porting yeah. exactly it's adapting and that's the important thing we're, we're seeing because um base i mean league of legends has league of legends wild rift where it is a yep. mobile game the control scheme is not the same as pc uh, it's a little bit different. The game length is much shorter, but the heroes are, are familiar and the, the map is familiar and the gameplay is very fast and fun. Um, and, it, you know, it's immensely popular. I mean, we think of other games like that. I mean, there's other MOBAs on, on mobile like Arena Valor. It has a different name in China. It's huge in China. Um, and, you know, now we've got, what, Apex, PUBG, does Fortnite have mobile? I honestly don't know. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so okay. Like the other one I was remember. thinking of. Yeah. Um, I don't really also, play VRs myself, so. You look at uh, other, like Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition. Do you guys remember that? I never actually played it, but it was like this shorter, like kind of revamped, but still followed the same story version of Final Fantasy 15 for phones. We're seeing more stuff like that too. And mm. that's cool. Yeah. No, it's uh, uh, someone in chat is asking a great question that sure. I want to just bring up. They said, "Does ROG have any graphics card holders?" Um, yeah, we do. Oh, do we? We got two. We got Wait. the ROG Wingwall and the ROG Herculex. Well, I'm going to link both in chat. And they're both like pretty new products overall. They um, are. They're both so. Yeah. yeah, they're they're gorgeous. Check them out. Yep, yep. And they're both a little bit different. One holds it up by the the brackets on the back of your PC, and one of them is like a stand that you can extend to hold it up. Mm -hmm. And they both have RGB and stuff. They both look pretty sweet. What is that noise? What noise is happening in my PC? I don't know. It's all you, man. It's in your head. Um, 
but we we uh yeah we're we're looking at a, a lot of news this week in general so just kind of cruising through um the dead space developers are working on a new game um so we'll see it's called callisto protocol it's we don't really know a whole lot about it we just know they're making a new game and we shall see soon there's a few screenshots um but we're not going to look at that oh. right now because we're just rolling through unless you really want to look at I'm just peeking. I'm just peeking. You're just, you're just peeking. Uh, v Rising uh, came out of nowhere. This is from Stunlock Studios. They are the creators of a game that I used to play a lot of called Battle Right, which was a 3v3 arena MOBA-like game. Very high skill ceiling, almost a little hardcore for the average player. They kind of went back to the roots and they kept that same kind of really fast, really fluid, clean execution on the gameplay and the combat. And they made a survival game. Um, which is which is very much like uh, you know it's very much like an MMO in some regards. You can play in PVE servers, you can play in PVP servers, um, but it's it's uh, run around, you know, kill enemies, uh, collect materials, harvest materials, mine materials, log trees, the whole it's deal. Isometric, right? Isometric, top down. Craft your own armor, craft your own weapons, craft your own tools, and then craft your own castle um nice and i know you're interested in this eric because we were just like jamming on on valheim right yeah but uh I know, i'm did you i'm want... intrigued you know like uh is honestly like right like this game is 20 bucks on steam lifting up this morning yeah and that is a lovely price but it's the kind of price <laughs> where i want someone to look me in the eye and say you're gonna love this and I'll, I'll have to talk you to just you said the word I, I, build a vampire castle literally <laughs> yeah so it's vampire like the, the narrative of the game when you put more detail do you mean the opening cinematic is like it, there was an age of vampire and then men banded together and kind of beat back the vampires. so the vampires went to sleep and they like kind of got in their coffins and went to sleep for like 300 years and now you're awakening and now you're hungering um i i only played for about 45 minutes so far but like one of the cool mechanics is one of the things you can do when it ends enemies low you can feed on it so you press like the f key and then you feed on the enemy and this could be a deer this could be a human it could be a knight and when you feed on it you actually gain a buff so but if you feed on a deer you get like plus eight percent movement speed or something right and or if you feed on like a, a golem or, or let's say just a larger enemy you might get bonus hp um and like you know work I, I don't really know much more beyond that system but it's a really it feels, cool mechanic it, it does feel really it feels like that there's a, a reason to be sucking the blood out of things rather than just raw killing it and it's like uh the glory kills in doom in a way um but it's, it's in a way that it's like functional while also tying into like lore and fun yeah and stuff. yeah 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 so um that's really cool. The crafting, I mean, I just made like the basic set of armor and the basic weapons and stuff. I haven't done any of the actual construction crafting. Um, I will say that the fact that it's isometric, I think the construction is going to feel more linear than Valheim, where Valheim you're building upwards and, you know, you're tunneling into the ground. It's not going to have that. Uh, so I don't think it'll be as rich in that sense. But the combat is definitely better than Valheim's. Um, it, it's just really clean. It feels like a really fast, fun, you know, isometric top-down game. They should have called it Age of Vampires. Damn. And what if they were... Hmm. <laughs> You're right. I like it. I like it. I missed out. Missed opportunity. <laughs> that would be a terrible... That would be too confusing. <laughs> no one would buy your game. They would just be like, oh, I played this new game, Age of Vampires. They'd search, oh, Age of Vampires, sure. <laughs> Buddy Love says he, he played the new Scar Runner DLC, died a lot. Oh. <laughs> Rest in Jake pieces. almost died when he was playing during the event. Yeah. I saw it, Jake. Yeah, yeah there were... Or, yeah, it's okay. I might have died a few times <laughs> off camera. Um, you had to re-record it a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, uh, just another little bit of info that came out this week was there was a Marvel MMO in the works and has reportedly been canceled. Did anyone in chat ever play Age of or City of Heroes? City of Heroes. Let's try, I was going to call it City of Thieves. I'm like, that is not what it's called. City of Heroes. And there was a thing, a city of villains, villains or was something it, right? was it an yeah. expansion pack they tried yeah, to yeah. Kind of, they tried to go the horde alliance kind of thing with i heroes played and it and... like super briefly i played it for like two days just to try it out i played it my friends played it and i played it at my friend's house i never it's pretty cool it myself i mean being able to fly through a city or like you know have like right. the, the hulk leaping from building to building um it was pretty fun but i'm a little sad the marvel mmo got canceled because that that it seems like there's a market there, especially with how popular, you know, the MCU is nowadays. That's true. 
I don't know. I feel like there aren't as many MMOs as there used to be. Is we, that a thing? Or am I just... Is it just because I'm not playing them? <laughs> Star Wars is still around. Star Wars, um, the Old Republic, the MMO. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's still yep, around. I knew that. Final Fantasy is bigger than ever. Final Fantasy 14. Um, okay. WoW has the retail and classic player base. However, retail is probably the lowest it's been in a long time, but I know the But it's still World of Warcraft. The community is very excited for the new expansion, the Dragon one, Dragonlands. Um, ABC Lich King. Or, Wrath, sorry, classic yeah, Wrath, King. Wrath comes out uh, later this year, we know. Um, so, I mean, I'm a classic player still. I'm raiding Sunwell, which is the last raid in TBC. That's what I'm doing tonight. Um, it's... Uh, and you know, I'm I'm sure there's still other MMOs that I'm not as plugged into, but it, Lord of the Rings Online went completely free a little while back. I, I, I hear it's actually good. I think the challenge with MMOs is they require an insane amount of work. Yeah, um, and it's like tough. like I, I'd say it'll it's a minimum of like six years of work to make a game that may never turn a profit. Right. It's it's really yep. risky in the end. I so, can see that. But it's still sad because that... especially in a market, if you if you feel the market is already saturated with MMOs, MMOs is not a game you play for 30 hours, then move on to the next one. No, it's... like people like you have to have a group of people that are fully invested. And if they're that audience for MMOs is already invested in another MMO that's still at its peak, like Final Fantasy 14. Right. Uh, it's harder to break into that market. Mm hmm. Oh, there it goes. Finally resized. Oh, now it's back. What's happening? So weird. It's, and I'm not touching anything. This is just happening on its own. Um, all right. Scrolling through. Back to survival games. This has become... I, I really want to credit Valheim for causing the survival game market to get way more interesting. Because 505 Studios released a trailer last week for a game called Among the Trolls. And Among the Trolls, um, it's not to say that Valheim is like the first successful survival game. It certainly isn't. Ark is one of the bigger ones that's come out. Um, you know, even New World made by AGS was originally supposed to be more of a survival yep. game than it ended up being. That's another MMO we could have mentioned. New World And is there's that, there Blizzard is making a survival game right blizzard has an we un know that. Un unannounced survival game um well unannounced. It, 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 it's it's announced but it has no title it has no information yeah. we just know they are making it there survival was just game. a picture one one image yep and then a recruiting image that is i believe unrelated to the game but a lot of people that covered that that launch thought it was it, related to the yeah, game. yeah 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 but it could be it could be we don't know i don't i my personal guess is that it is not um so yeah, we got Blizzard doing it. Now 505 Studios has made Among the Trolls, which looks kind of like The Forest, if you guys know what that is, um, mm -hmm. but with like a finished touch on it where it's, you're in the forest with this big, I, I presume they're going to be like these large trolls of sorts as the enemy. You say that, and in my head, I just keep picturing troll dolls or like from <laughs> the movie Trolls. And every time I'm like, why is Jake still talking about this game? That's It's, it's yeah. a problem with my brain. <laughs> Clearly, I need to reorient and like, just imagine the troll from Lord of the Rings. I'm, I'm, I'm just really, really, it looks really clean. It looks really well executed. Very beautiful graphics. Um, classic survival game. We'll see. Uh, I mentioned the forest. Sons of the Forest was supposed to come out six days ago and has been delayed till October. So we'll, we'll find out um, more about that soon. Th that developer. Um, wow, I'm reading their name. Night. And 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 night and night studios, they are. Um, I think that sounds right to me. Anyways, they are. Uh, they're they're very quiet. They don't. They they like release patches for their games and like literally tell no one. And then people run into it and they're like, "What is this?" And then eventually, it's interesting. It's no. It's it's amazing. Um. So I, I, I mean, yeah, I kind of dig it. To just give a, a simple idea, is I was an active player of like the unreleased version of the forest when when it was oh, early access and one day they just decided that they were gonna like put this giant crater in the earth with a series of tunnels that connect to it and never knew about it logging in it was just like oh my god what just happened what is this like um so because that's a one persistent map kind of game it's not like valheim where it's randomly generated maps one island uh with a cave system beneath and a whole upper level Great game. Um, I'm, I know we're almost 30 minutes into the show and I'm still just jamming. It's okay. We're at the news. end. <laughs> uh, and then this yeah. is really quick. We got more games getting RTX and TLSS. Hitman 3, F1 22, F1 2022 is coming to. And 
our favorite deep rock galactic we gotta play that again soon which i know we do so it actually has i think an experimental version of our uh, ray chasing in it but it's experimental so i'm always afraid to turn it on mm-hmm. but it's like apparently officially coming and uh vampire the masquerade swan song also getting rtx and dlss among some other games as well so always exciting to see new games supporting these technologies uh yeah especially for for p- folks with slightly older cards now before we move on to to the tech news jake i gotta ask because i didn't get to see the whole stream did you like multiverses this game looks ridiculous and i have as someone who like got like started their career in smash brothers i have to ask you what you think of of multiverses okay so multiverses is warner brothers new fighting game if you guys haven't heard about it it is Jake streamed it last week. Go watch it. I streamed it, it last week. <laughs> I'm probably going to stream it again tomorrow. I'm like torn between that, that and V Rising, but I'm, I'm liking multiverses. I'm giving you a... Everyone's a, talking about multiverses. Milk it while you can. <laughs> they're talking about both of them. They're both... I mean, V Rising just broke a million players. That's pretty incredible. Wow, that's pretty um, crazy. Yeah, but multiverses... Early, early access. Yeah, that yeah. So old multiverses is currently in technical alpha. I believe it's scheduled for open beta in July, but it's a small roster from characters from like Adventure Time, scooby-doo batman superman um you know uh, all these different ips eventually we could see adventure time yeah he said i said that said adventure oh time. you did okay sorry yep. i missed, missed eventually it. we could see harry potter and, and lord of the rings characters and uh mad max imagine the guy that goes witness me and sprays spray paint <laughs> imagine him as a playable character i don't know Yucks. um I'm, I'm totally down for it it's just, Ar- like, it's just like the weirdest cast of characters but warner and brothers owns all it. these the iron giants iron giant was confirmed tasmanian devil is the newest character they've added in velma drops her glasses when she uses her crawl and it blurs the screen for all players right there's a lot of what? really quirky things that are is that are just that just make the game feel really alive. They've got Arya Stark from Game of Thrones as a character. It's it's uh Maisie Williams, the the actress from from Game of Thrones, yeah, yeah. voice acting, right? It's got this such gosh. We does Arya the, leap in unexpectedly and steal kills from people? <laughs> her kit because is that would be uh all right, well, in line with season eight. Her kit is incredible. Her neutral special. I mean, this. I'm I'm a platform fighter guy, guys. So you you open this can of worms. I'm sorry. I knew I was opening. Her, her, it. her, her it neutral out. special is she steals your face, which allows her to Perfect. then reactivate it and then stun you. So it's like it's like an advantage kind of thing. Like she has your in her back pocket. She can. It'd be throw... cool if she stole your face and could get one of your abilities, like Kirby in Super Smash. Yeah, I think that'd be a little corny for for the IP. I mean, I get what I I initially but thought. But it's versus like I know, but there's still. Are we um, worried about lore here? Well, I, I I feel like that every one of these IPs, you know, Warner Brothers has to get approval to do certain things with these characters, right? Oh yeah, maybe. right. There's you know, you think about like the Tolkien estate. They're not just gonna let Gandalf shoot fireballs willy nilly, right? Because he doesn't. He never actually does that. Right. He has magic, but he doesn't just fling fireballs. Um, But anyways, Arya's kit like has that. She actually does bonus damage uh, when when she backstabs you. Right. Because she's supposed to be this sneaky little stealth character. So like her, her down neutral, which is she rolls behind you and slashes. Right. So she's like high mobility, um, high damage. Her kill she really has to combo you to get kills off the stage because it's like smash where you have to kill in the blast zone on the top or the side of the stage um it's really fun so they've they've actually taken this this formula that smash brothers created for platform fighters and they made it their own they're they're doing a lot of things that are familiar and they're doing a lot of things that are different so some some of the main differences some of the main differences that stand out to me as being really interesting is you there's like a cooldown system so batman one of his abilities is to arm be able to arm his batarang with uh like an explosive like a little Mm -hmm. detonation and that has a cooldown built into it right you can't just spam one ability all the time right that's good yeah and it it it, it feels like they've taken influence from like mobas because Yeah, yeah characters have identities like bugs bunny is considered a mage he summons anvils and and I mean, he, he summons rockets and like makes sense. he can tunnel through the ground. So he's listed as a mage, which is kind of weird. Wiley Coyote is an engineer. He's not in the game yet, but he should be. <laughs> or like uh, Marvin the Martian. He should be like 
uh, I think they, they just call it like Harley Quinn. I, I play a lot of Harley Quinn and Arya, they're assassins. Um, but yeah, makes sense. the core mode they're promoting is 2v2 and there are support characters like Wonder Woman can shield you and her ally. She can also pull you back on, pull your ally back on the stage with her whip. Um, so she can use her lasso, you know, support offensively. Characters. So it's a support character in the sense of like, uh, like Marvel versus Capcom. No, no, it's a two v two game where you're okay. playing with a teammate two, two versus players. two okay. other two other players, and um, you know she can she can put a shield on. Uh, Rhein Dog is one of the characters. I don't know what IP that's that's from. I'm maybe a little too old for that cartoon to have not caught it, but. He has like, uh, you know, tethers and he can pull allies back over to him and and do things like that. So it, if it's really fresh. It's really polished. And the last thing I'll say before going on a two hour show talking about multiverses is um, the net code is incredible. Oh, so yeah, that, I've, I yeah, heard that. Yeah, like it's I've played I've played a lot of fighting games online over the years and They've almost always had uh, weak net codes, um, and multiverses is hands down by far the best net code, the best latency I've experienced in a game for fighting. Uh, that's awesome. You said you were maybe streaming it tomorrow. Aren't you streaming Star Citizen tomorrow? Oh crap! You're right. I just keep thinking of multiverses. I am. Streaming I was Star talking Citizen about. Tomorrow. I was talking to about it today. Yeah. Hey Jake, how do I redeem Wiggle? I'm not teaching you that right now. Because I I have like. 30,000 <laughs> ROG points. Could I just like spam it over the course of a stream? I mean, just make you, you wiggle. You probably could. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, now that I'm done rambling about all the oh gaming my news. Gosh. Twitch um, tried to auto mod someone for saying Looney. Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Looney. Well, <laughs> sorry, 305 Buddy Love. I got you. Uh, excuse me. Co long COVID is, is still kicking my butt, still coughing a lot, but. Yeah, tune in next week. We'll, we'll we'll probably play some more multiverses and V Rising if you if you're interested in either of those games. Tomorrow, and tune in tomorrow for Star Citizen. Yes, it'll be Star Citizen playing with 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 my flight sticks, um, and just kind of checking out the new uh, Invictus Week event that's happening. There's a a new ship that I have been eagerly awaiting. That's basically an X wing called the RSI Scorpius, and I have yet to log in to check it out. So I'm gonna do that live on stream tomorrow called the rsi scorpius because rsi is what you get when you play star citizen for too long hey yo i don't know what rsi is i just think of oh wow. the carpal tunnel oh great rsi is repetitive strain injury oh robert space industries in this case but close enough <laughs> should we talk about computex i guess so i guess i sweet guess sweet new hardware was unveiled Ah, hey man, this chat is already talking about monitors. They want us to talk. Monitors. I know. Let's start I there. Know. Let's start with the panel. All right. Yeah. We can do that. That's uh, all right. That's New a weird place to start, but I'm cool with it. No, we're going to do this all backwards. We're going all right. All backwards. So RG, we're going backwards. We have a, a swift 500 Hertz monitor. Now we were the it's first. Not, it's not OLED monitors guys. Sorry. I didn't say it's like OLED monitors. They think it's OLED monitors. Not we, OLED. Monitors. We did announce OLED monitors earlier this year. At, yes, uh, all the are still coming. We announced a 42 and a 48 inch. They are still coming later this year. Um, but this was our the first ever. This five, is the opposite of that. 500 hertz <laughs> panel, not OLED. No, it's um, IPS, right? No, it is actually oh, a not. new yeah. type of TN panel. So this, it's a. First of all, let's let's like back up a second. Say, we we introduced the first 144 hertz monitor. We went 240 hertz. We did the first 360 hertz monitor. And now we're here with the first 500 freaking hertz monitor. And the way that we did this was that it is a 24.1 inch 1080p panel, and it is called ETN. The E stands for eSports. Yes. Uh, it is a panel specifically designed for eSports super, super high refresh uh, displays, and it has 60% better response times than TN panels. What? Not IPS panels, 60% better than the already super fast TN panel. Okay. So this thing is bonkers okay uh this is an amled panel from auo and uh it's got gsync and the nvidia reflex latency analyzer in it which i think you would hope for in a monitor that's designed for or super sports competitive esports yeah, players no. you can do all the plug in your mouse do all kinds of tuning make sure your settings are are keeping your input lag as low as humanly possible and it has um 
uh, like a variable overdrive system that makes sure you're, you've got the ideal level of overdrive at any point within that large, large, large refresh range. Because remember, the best level of overdrive at um, you know 300 hertz is not necessarily the same as what the best level of overdrive on a monitor is for 60 or 100 hertz. It kind of changes throughout that range. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just aghast at the fact that this exists i mean we talked so we talked about this on pulse earlier this year because when when a uh auo first came out and said we've got a 500 hertz panel the first thing i said was when are we putting it in an rg swift display and here we are we were the first to do it um i'm very excited to see it very excited uh, I will remind, I had some people in chat earlier saying, who needs 500 hertz? 240 hertz is enough. Nah, dog. That's what I thought before I reviewed the 360 hertz panel for IGN. And I did an A-B test. I had my wife. I closed my eyes. And my wife changed the refresh rate on me. And I could tell the difference. Nine out of ten times. I'm very curious to see what 500 hertz brings to the table, for I, sure. One thing that was pretty cool that we were able to do at PAX East was use a 144 hertz panel with a 360 hertz panel right next to it. And you could just touch the yep. mouse and just jump side to side. And that was a really cool way to just feel the difference, especially if you went into a shooting range in Valorant or something, which we did. For sure, um, yep. I, and I would say, obviously the higher up you go, the the more, uh, the smaller the difference is. 144 to 240 is, is a very noticeable difference, in my opinion. Mm. 240 mm. to 360 is noticeable, but it doesn't feel like as big of a jump. But again, if you're like if you're a pro esports player or you're a very very hardcore competitive esports player, um, those differences that might seem small to someone like me are are going to be more noticeable for you as well. So that 500 hertz, um, I would be shocked if it didn't make a difference. I think I think I'll be able to notice it. I think that people who are more experienced with that type of gameplay are really going to notice it. Um, and it's that, you know, every competitive advantage uh, matters. I would also be quick to um, point out that TN panels have come a long way, too. So I'm actually really looking forward to see um, uh, how this thing performs. I've heard some good things. I don't know what I can say about its performance and specs, um, but I've heard some good things uh, in terms of color cool. and contrast and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm excited to check it out. Absolutely. You know, one thing I really love about uh, the RG Swift series is just, you know, how much um, we're just targeting in on an audience, you know, yeah. saying, all right, you guys who are playing these esports games that are already running at, you know, brilliance of FPS per second, <laughs> let's <laughs> give you a monitor that gives you the ultimate competitive edge. I can actually display all those frames. Yeah, absolutely. I Why mean, not? like 500 hertz is not too much when CSGO is like routinely like going over 400 FPS on a well-set-up system. That's League of thing. Legends, how fast does that run? Like, <laughs> right? Let's take advantage of this. Is this another another important thing to notice that a lot of people look at that and say like, oh, I don't get 500 frames per second, so 500 hertz doesn't matter. No, as long as you're getting over 360 frames per second, then mm -hmm. a 500 hertz panel matters over a 360 hertz because it's not just about maxing out the refresh rate. It's about anything over what's currently available in the next step down. You're making use of it. And with oh, yeah. you know, that's why G-Sync exists, right? Um, it's not about being at a locked 500. Although, you know, with CSGO, CSGO and whatever <laughs> next gen graphics cards are coming down the pipe it could be possible next gen CPUs which we'll get to I'll we'll uh, find out yeah you know. that's one thing I like about G-Sync in particular you know like with G-Sync you're thinking about the range you want to have yep. as big of a range as possible where G-Sync is performing its magic and having like whatever to 500 I love it absolutely love it yep mm. so yep I'm 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 excited. We're gonna. I hope that I'll get my hands on out. it eventually. We'll, we'll show it off on <laughs> stream day. eventually. By the time but... they're coming out with the 600 hertz panel, they'll be like, "Okay, here you go, Jake." I, I had the 360 hertz panel here for like a week, and that you was did? it. Yeah, for like one week, I had it. Um, they sent it to me for filming some other project after I requested it a million times. Like, oh yeah, you can have it, but we need it back immediately. I'm like, okay. Well, was... <laughs> Milky Ice makes another great point. Even if you're not getting 500 frames per second uh you're getting reduced input lag 
and latency because the screen is refresh has refreshing so often that it's going to give you the most up to date information, even if you're only getting 370 frames per second or whatever. You're still seeing that information sooner. Very true. So, yep, esports people get pumped. Something the rest of you guys for. asking about 32 inch OLEDs, I don't have anything for you yet, but stay tuned. <laughs> you never know. Uh, I actually. But that's <laughs> all right let's uh let, let's let's transition to the am5 launch event and talk a little bit about yeah. the next generation of intel cpus and the motherboards not that intel will... not intel did i say oh my god ryzen shake <laughs> we just did that <laughs> this is about ryzen yeah uh ryzen to the challenge eric do you want to start with this i know this is like your your bread and butter you love oh, some yeah. other words. I have been living and breathing AM5 for, uh, oh, it feels like forever just now. It's been a busy season here, but honestly, we're really excited. Um, you know, let's start with uh, what we know about uh, Ryzen 7000 series. You know, just first off, it's just as a general computer enthusiast, I always love it when there is fantastic competition between Intel and AMD. I love it. Yeah, Intel yeah. put it's out been good an for impressive a years. salvo was, you know, the Z690 and the 12th gen platform just a few months ago. And here we've got AMD firing back. A um, couple big things to point out with this, you know, uh, we're seeing here Ryzen is hitting uh, DDR5 territory. And uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like the timing is good. I feel like the timing is good for that, isn't it? DDR5 DDR has matured a lot, in even in just bit. the it's last maturing. six months. Yep, for sure. Um, yep, I'm I, I'm not going to say a ton more than that. But yeah, it yeah. is. We're looking, I, I mean, I don't want to get off on a tangent. we got a five cool. nanometer process. Um, yeah, it's, it's all about the fives, right? Five DDR5, five, five nanometer, PCIe 5.0. Five motherboards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know if we're, are we only going to have five motherboards or is that just like there's a five, five in the video we released peaks of, <laughs> I feel like we usually have more than five motherboards for a given site. I'm sure we will. Fun. I'm sure we will. It's the five motherboard family guys. Come on now. Get it together. <laughs> just like chewing. It's like what it's like to chew five gum. There's a question in chat. Will five nanometer be a game changer? We'll find you out. Know, I mean, so they gave us a little bit of a tease, right? So they showed their 16-thread CPU boosting to 5.5 gigahertz in a game. And that was a game. That wasn't even just like a necessarily a single-threaded. 5.5 like gigahertz on a 16. Was that Ghostwire uh, Tokyo? Sorry, six, 16. I think it was a 16-core CPU. Did I say 16-thread? I misspoke. 16-core. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Ghostwire Tokyo. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. I mean, 5950X was, I think, 4.9 gigahertz. Um so yeah, that's a boost. Uh, you know, you've also got uh, uh, integrated graphics on every AM5 uh, desktop CPU. That's kind of a, a game changer too, right? So like us gamers, we usually don't think about integrated graphics because we think we're going to put a graphics card in a, in a PC anyway. We think we're going to? We know we're going to. We know we're going to. We're I'm not sorry. savages. But, <laughs> and, and, and that's like a very fair point. And, and yeah, I... Uh, very rarely have lamented the lack of integrated graphics on my Ryzen CPU. Mm. But good God, when you are troubleshooting mm -hmm. issues, it is so nice. Or you have to update a you know BIOS or something. It's just so nice to have integrated graphics available yeah. to you yeah. in the rare occasions that you need it. So I never thought of it that five, way, but that's a good point. Yeah, I, it's troubleshooting I, is the big issue here. Speaking as a guy who has made mistakes. Yep. when building a pc just don't make mistakes problem solved <laughs> you know yeah after 10 years of building pcs you learn the stuff that i have i have a little like i have an old ass like tiny graphics card in my drawer just in case i run into issues and i need to troubleshoot because i don't have integrated graphics i have this little tiny graphics card i could pop in you know a gt like 720 or whatever the heck it was from like a million years oh. ago oh yeah i don't even know if that's a real g i don't literally don't know what gpu it is it's so old i've forgotten it has vga <laughs> on it like <laughs> it's, it's old but these are the kind of things that are really really useful and that five nanometer chip leaves some room for integrated graphics you know i really want to see an action like you know they're talking about a 15 percent single threaded performance improvement yep 
you know, just we've come a long way from like AMD and Ryzen being the absolute king of the core counts. Like they the are line really all and yeah. they well, they still are though. Like, look, I mean, we're talking about a 16 core CPU here, 16 full cores, right? It's still, you you still, and I, this is what I like. I'm saying that this is a positive thing. You're talking about competition between Intel and AMD. With Intel it has this really interesting new architecture with P cores and E cores, and AMD is still kind of striving for like let's pack as many cores into this thing as we can. It gives you a reason to go one or the other, right? It's not just well this one's always better. It's like well what are you doing on your PC, mm -hmm. right? These chips are better for these applications. These chips are better for these types of applications. You can kind of choose what's best for you. Um, they also, I think, doubled the L2 cache to one megabyte, but no mention of 3DV cache, which makes me wonder what the future might have in store. Hmm. Because yeah. we just made this big splash with 3DV cache on the the 5800X3D, like one of the fastest, if not the fastest gaming chip you can get right now. So how is that going to fit into the Ryzen 7000 series now or in the future? Um, that's something I'm excited to watch for. I wonder if that's going to like routinely be a half generation launch like every Maybe. half generation that'll have its own launch. It would make sense because it's not, you know, it's not something you necessarily want on all of your chips. Right? right. Um, it makes sense for them to offer it as variants, I think, kind of like they did with the 5800X so that, again, people can choose. OK, I'm only gaming. So having that 3D V cache makes sense. Or no, I'm doing all of these other uh, different kinds of workloads. Maybe you want the more all around kind of CPU. Yeah, these are all like I like options. Uh, they also announced uh, smart access storage, which is uh, their implementation of direct storage, which means super fast loading times in games. This is the thing I am like most pumped for, honestly, in gaming right now. I just cannot wait for direct storage to come to fruition right. so I can leave loading times in the dust. I hear you. You know, I want my games to load as fast as Windows loads. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. where I'm just like, I'm going to push a button, and oh, here I am. You like, like go to take a sip of your water, and the game's already loaded, and you're already dead. You're like, ah, oh, it loaded too fast. Like, that's what I want. I, I want like load loading so times. The tips, the tips they show you during the loading screens. Like <laughs> I want it to load so fast that I don't have time to read them. <laughs> we That's know. what I want. How are we going to learn how to play with video games anymore, Whitson? We're going to lose all of our we'll guidance. We'll have to have manuals again, like back in the 80s when like you only got the story and the lore of the game if you read the manual. And you like only learned the controls if you read the manual. Uh, That's what if it'll we go. Like. If we go back to manual-based DRM, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I need the Prima strategy guide to, to figure out, like, the basic moves of the game. <laughs> so more details on these chips coming this summer. Um, they, they, this was a little bit more than a teaser, but it wasn't quite the full reveal. So we've got, we've got more coming soon. But alongside that, we announced a motherboard. There we go. This thing looks Never. sick. Holy moly. It's a beauty. Um, so this is the new Crosshair, right? Yeah, Crosshair X670 Crosshair Extreme. Extreme. Um, yeah. Enemy Matrix, I believe, right there. Indeed it is. Yeah, gorgeous. I love that we're getting the Enemy Matrix like all oh, no. over our gear. That is such a fantastic way to personalize your gear. It's a gorgeous board. I mean, there's not a lot else to say about it. We we can just see that it's it's coming soon. It'll be here. Um, this is going to be maybe the tier where we start to see more users start to shift to DDR5, and and uh, of course we can expect another generation of GPUs before too long. Um, maybe another year or so. Who knows? Uh, but you know, just leveling up. I, I'm personally going to be building a new new machine within the next year. Right. It's just it feels like a good time to be going to the next level. I'm small again. What the heck? Look, man, sometimes you just got to just got to just got to gotta be small. So a couple and things I'll point out about this motherboard in particular that I find uh, um, exciting. Uh, first off, I'm really happy that we are introducing our full range of Q design features on this motherboard. Um, we have lots of ways that just make building a lot more friendly and easy. Uh, the my favorite is the Q release um, 
button for the PCI X16 slot. Just, you know, that little like catch that used to kind of hold that oh, the graphics card in place. You know, that was designed like 20 years ago. When GPUs like that. were <laughs> a fraction of the size of the modern day ones. I still get frustrated every time I have to like try and get one of those latches. And I'm like, well, my graphics card is covering the entire thing. I need like a chopstick or something to like. Yeah, I've got this ruler that I use. I've got like a metal ruler that I just have to gently. Is that what the ruler that came with my Strix card is for? <laughs> no, I don't think that's the purpose of it. That's, that's what it's for. My Strix card came with this little six inch ruler. And now, now I know why it's I, now I know why. So you can exactly actually reason. get get in there and remove it. But yeah, the Q latch is incredible, not only for building, but for maintenance. Um, anytime you got to do anything to your GPU, if you want to take it out and clean the fans, whatever you're doing, uh, it's just a, a simple button that you press to the right of it. And this is something that we're seeing on, on pretty much all of our premium boards. I don't know if it's all of our boards yet. Yeah, it's not everything, but, uh, it definitely, we're going to be seeing it here, in particular, the, 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 our, um, crosshair series here. It's likely to be across our options there. Not that I'm teasing more than just the one. <laughs> yeah this is all we have right now yeah this is i love this preview these boards look sick oh doesn't that tough gaming board look pretty hot I'm i actually that, that that tough gaming board does look really cool um but the rg boards call to me yeah they do i've got a cross uh, right here on myself so i do that's like it that i series. literally just upgraded the cpu in my rig so <laughs> <laughs> now i gotta now i just gotta throw it all away and start over this is the way building goes. You always regret the CPU you just purchased. Well, that was the beauty of AM4 is that that had so much longevity that I could upgrade the CPU, right? Mm. Um, we don't know if AM5 is going to have anything like that, but I'll be interested to see. Yeah, so we'll see. there are three different chipsets that AMD is talking about here. This particular mm -hmm. motherboard is the X670E. The E stands for extreme. So, yes, this is the X670 Extreme Extreme. Uh, I wish they had just called it the X670 Extreme with two X's. That would have gotten across the double extreme, extreme, extreme. idea. How about, how about five extremes? I mean, Wait, can everything we, else is yeah. five. Uh, X <laughs> Extreme. But uh, so the X670E boards are going to have uh, PCIe 5.0 on all the slots, right? Nice. That's the idea. Uh, whereas the standard X670 boards are going to be PCIe 5.0 on the storage and PCIe 5.0 on the graphics, which I think basically just means like that first slot where you would put a graphics card. That what that means. And then they also announced B650, which is just going to be PCIe 5.0 on the storage slots for use yeah. with that aforementioned smart access storage uh, for mm -hmm. fast loading times. Yeah, so this is a way that we're, you know, giving people some options. Um, the X670E naming is really just to help those folks who, like, I want the best of everything. Which one of these motherboards gives me the fastest drives on the market, the fastest graphics cards, and the best connectivity? So these are really going to be the premium boards. But, you know, let's Plus show some features. love. Let's show some love to everyone else in the world. Not all of us get the best of the best the moment it, that it comes out. You know, what? folks have different budgets. Folks have different needs. I hope I don't get fired for saying this. <laughs> we This is one of our ways of giving you options. I mean, uh, if that weren't true, we wouldn't sell any other motherboards, right? I only use the one PCI Express slot on my motherboard for graphics, which I think is true of a lot of gamers um depends so, if you're doing capture card i mean that's what yeah, i always but use if you're doing capture card and stuff like that then yeah. maybe you know especially as capture cards you're pushing a lot of bandwidth on those mm -hmm. maybe you want to kind of future proof it with more uh pcie 5.0 slots yep. that's a very valid thing or if you're uh, are multi gpus still a thing i don't even know 3090 if you're doing like rendering maybe um i but i don't even believe 30 30 80 and 30 they don't even support it anymore it's only the 3090, if I'm not mistaken. So, Support what? Uh, the yeah. SLI. Oh. Yeah, that's only for the very high-end things for yeah, but, people hey, rendering render farms it, who need it. It does there exist, yeah, but it's more like, you know, if you're rendering, doing like 3D rendering or something. Uh, that's really more when, when it's used. For gaming, I don't think it's even remotely worth it nowadays. But unless you're, you're again, you're using like a, a hot capture card that requires the bandwidth or something like no, that. No, I'm just talking about double GPU. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, GPUs are pretty powerful now. Yeah. I remember my SLI days. Yeah, me too. 
<laughs> dual 780s. Mm. I had dual 9800 GTs. <laughs> oh, nice. On, yeah. my, on my first desktop, my first big desktop. You started. Back when cards were only one slot. Well, no, I started with just one 9800 GT, and then I was like, you know what? I need more. And so I put another one in there, and I felt really baller. Uh, yeah, so that's this is an EATX board. Um, so make sure your case is compatible with EATX boards. Yeah, lots of RGB headers, anime matrix, all the good stuff. Yeah, this is the only board on this article, though, right? Yeah, that's the only one we have announced yep. so far. We've kind of teased, teased these other guys, some other ones mm-hmm. that might be yeah. coming down the pipe. These are not, I mean, these are also not final. So, you know, don't take this video it's as early. gospel. It's kind of a preview of what we're working on. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm excited. Honestly, I, it's exciting to be able to like share like one of the boards in the series a bit yeah. earlier than we otherwise would. Yep. You know, very often a new motherboard, new chipset comes out and we're like, here, everyone, here's 20 of them. And it's just so much information. It's a little bit overload. It's like, ah, which board do I want? I know everybody wants all the information immediately, but like being able to come out and say, hey, here's what we're starting with. Here's this first one. Right, and we'll definitely have more to share. Yeah, we're still kind of far out. So it's actually nice. Like consider this an early access preview to what's coming down the pipe. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I own a Crosshair 8 Hero. It's not the extreme board, but just kind of, you know, this is a couple generations old at this point uh i just really like the looks like there's a start button up here in the top right corner of the motherboard so some some neat little little thing i don't think i've seen that on their other boards or at least i not one that i've had on hand um so that's kind of cool i have i not even looked that closely yeah yeah that right is here? a start looks like a there's start, another yeah. button there that i can't read what it says i just see the word that the other part it says key uh, yeah. It could be a hockey button for all I know. Oh, I don't yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of nice features built in there for folks who are uh, doing some extreme overclocking and need some kind of uh, quick tools to. That's this another... setting was a bit too far. Let me uh, let me start over here. Yeah, mm. that's another case where these like really high end boards or that's kind of who this is designed for too, right? Like extreme overclockers and stuff like that as well. Uh, those features come in handy for sure. Absolutely. The one I think that's more generally useful is uh, there's the uh, the QLED diagnostic array. There's just like a couple little LEDs with some easy markers. And if your system hangs up and is not starting, it'll flash a little light right by the component that is most likely causing the issue. Wow, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then there's a little like a screen that gives you, you a two digit code until you start troubleshooting. And then you go, God, I wish I had that light. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, it, that's one of the things, you know, when, when one part of the PC, like, needs to be replaced, your hard drive or something, like, from your perspective as a user, you're like, this whole thing isn't working. And honestly, no, it's one thing. Let us show you what it's it is. It's always one thing. Take care of that one thing, you're back in business. Yep. But but it's so fun to just throw it away and start over and build a new PC. <laughs> that's how I that's how I excuse an entirely new build is. Well, I tried for ten minutes, couldn't figure it out. Guess I'm building a new PC. <laughs> I gotta justify it somehow because this PC is what a year and a half old. So, oh my gosh, it's basically ancient. I know, a year right? and a half. How do you live? I try. Guys, mine is four years old. <laughs> but but I, I upgraded the CPU and the GPU. I saw this case that we had at our booth um, at PAX East and it's not a case that we make, but I just fell in love with it. It's a corner case that just like fits what I want to do really. A corner case? Corner. So it's like actually it's glass on the front, glass on the side, and then it has a angled piece on the the corner. So it's like all glass and it's, you know, if I put it in my corner here, it would, I just be looking at glass on the inside. That sounds awesome. I believe it's made by iBuyPower. Um, it was a, just a really, really gorgeous case. And I was like, all right, well, that is going to be the, for, you know, the, the style that I want for my next PC build. I don't know if it's going to be that case or if somebody else is going to make a case like it, that's maybe a little bit better. I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped for it. That is, yeah, that's cool. Uh, so I, uh, go ahead. No, I was, I, you know, I've always thought about upgrading my case, but I put so much effort into drilling a giant hole in this one for, for my top fan that I feel uh, like now I can't ever give it up. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, 
Couple, couple questions. Can I put my current RAM and a Ryzen 5900X into this new motherboard? No, this is a new socket. AM4 has had a good run, a good long run, but it is time for a new socket. We've got a new socket with many more pins. The pins are actually on the motherboard now, Intel style, rather than the pins being on the CPU. That's nice, because I think that'll lead to few, probably fewer bent pins um, in the future. It's a nice feature. Uh, You've also got support for up to 170 watts in that CPU socket. Um, so that means you're going to be able to push more power to the CPU, uh, th you know, the current gen and possibly upcoming gens as well. So it's time, five nanometer, it's time for a new socket. And the other side of it is that uh, all of the new motherboards for AM5 are going to be DDR5. There yep. will not That's be it. any DDR4 options for the latest AMD Ryzen chips. It's a good time for a new a new socket. Like we're seeing a lot with the shift to DDR5, the shift to uh, faster storage, all of this stuff. It's like it's a good time to start fresh um, with the latest and greatest technologies, rather than having to do that like two years ago before like DDR5 was standard or before like PCI 5.0 had really like made it. This is this is it. This is the time. And I, I think we'll see the price on, on DDR5 go down. Um, you know, we already are. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. So by the time that we're actually looking to build these machines, it should be hopefully a little bit better priced. Because right now it is. Uh, oh, it's it going down. On the, it depends on and, what sticks you're buying too. If you're going like full RGB and stuff, they're always going to be fairly. You're expensive. paying. You're paying a premium. For yeah. It. Yeah. So. I'll also throw out there that memory manufacturers are coming out with faster kits. They're coming out with kits with tighter timings. Like That's true. if you're looking up the value of DDR5 for your application, be it gaming for your content creation workload, like make sure you're looking at recent reviews of yep. what DDR5 can do because, you know, it's a very rapidly developing field right now. And it's and make not sure the same as it was back in November, last November. And make sure you're looking at the sticks that are right for your use case, right? If you're like, if you're looking at DDR5 and going, this is so expensive, but you're looking at literally the fastest possible DDR5 sticks with RGB and the tightest timings, and that's not actually what you need, well, you can probably save a little money. Like, it's 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 not as easy as like, go to Newegg, type DDR5, and pick the first thing that pops up. It's you gotta you gotta look around a little bit. This is why when I decide to build my new PC, I'm just gonna say, hey, Whitson. Here's what I want. Build you got me, a whole build team me a, of people. Build me a part list, and then <laughs> and then build me the PC, and then mail it to me. Perfect. You don't even you want know. to build it. That's no, the fun I'll, part. I'll build it. I'll build it. Hey, I come always on, guys. I always do something stupid when I build it. I made fun of Eric earlier. I said, yeah, "Don't make like mistakes." I, said, That's I the have. Fun part. I've never never done a new build that turned on immediately the first time. I I'll, it'll be something like I forgot to plug in the the power button on the case to the motherboard, or like yeah. it, it's you know it's not or like the the the, the RAM mm -hmm. was a little bit loose, right? But it's still not like you immediately are like, "Oh, that's what's wrong." It's like, "Oh no, what have I done?" Um, <laughs> You always uh, assume that you fried the CPU or something, right? Or at least that's you know, I, Whitson. I was expecting the chat. This. The chat is a little mad at you about these uh, RGB on your uh, memory kit. I feel like they're missing the most important element. Though. I mean, you guys can have RGB. That's okay. What's the most important element? I mean, I feel like the color of the heat spreader is way more important on my memory. So yeah, I don't have RGB, but I did. This is like I went with slower RAM just so I could have the right color heat spreader to match the rest of the RGB in my case. Aesthetics. It's yeah, yeah. This man knows what's important in life. I know, I know what's up. But <laughs> but I have I have thought about oh should I should I go for higher speed RAM with RGB and just shell out the cash maybe next build maybe I will I say I say all of that like you don't need the highest end DDR5 RAM with RGB but that's definitely what I'm doing next build. <laughs> I'm just saying you don't always need it, but sometimes I, you want it. I mean, some parts of a PC are about what you need, mm -hmm. but there has to be something in the build that's about what you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like this anime matrix. Guys, I want it. We, we are, we are going to do a Marvel's Unstream giveaway in a minute, and if you want to partake in that giveaway, you just need to go to twitch.tv slash ASUSROG and then type exclamation mark play in chat to join the marbles giveaway. We're going to actually, normally we do one middle of the show. I think we're going to stop doing that because it always derails the conversation. Instead, for our giveaway at the end of the show, it'll be first and last place getting a $20 voucher to us.gamesplanet.com. 
Mm. I love giving it the last place. The biggest loser, the best, the best. Lucky is in chat and she says, yeah, this is just like abandoning the high level armor in a game because it doesn't match the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like you're peering exactly into my Elden Ring build right now. <laughs> oh, no. I feel targeted right now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even tell tell Pulse. I beat Elden Ring. It happened. If you missed the stream last week, I finally beat it. It took me about 100 hours of gameplay. Um, oh. Don't tell me that. I'm only 60 hours in. You're fine. You're fine. I did a lot of side stuff. A lot of, I did too. A lot of exploring. A lot of optional bosses. Um, I, I did too. I'm scaling back the exploring now. I'm like, I'm ready to move, but I still got to get all the best spells. Yeah. Well, if and when you finally beat it, we'll have to compare endings. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea what any of the endings are. I have not looked that up. I've looked up a lot of stuff, but I don't know anything about the endings. Is this a live or pre-recorded video? We are live. Um, hello. We're, we're Pro- almost Prabhu. always live. Yeah, we we rarely do anything pre-recorded. But we are wrapping up here. We're doing a giveaway that you have to enter through Twitch chat. So head over to twitch.tv slash Asus ROG and type exclamation mark play in chat to get entered. You'll be represented as a marble on this screen. You can see we've got 44 marbles um, you know, in total right now here ready to enter. Come on, guys. Everyone enter. We should get 670 marbles in honor of our X670 board. Wow. We don't, I don't even, I have the cap set to 500, so we couldn't even do that. <laughs> We'd break the internet. Give you guys another moment or so. But yeah, Eric, I'm going to have to get in touch with you soon about V Rising. I you know we were talking about that a bit earlier. I think I, I, I now feel a higher obligation to grind more of that game next week to get a, a better oh. taste of what it's all about so that I can give you that peer review. Um, <laughs> but I want to hear it. The, the first... I think the question of my week is this. Am I buying V Rising or am I buying Factorio? Oh, I'm so afraid of Factorio. Like, I just, I know the time sink is going to happen if I play that one. It's I know. up there. But is it that kind of time sink, or is it that kind of time? I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're going. I wish you all the best of luck. First and last place, getting a prize. Oh yeah. So AM5, do we have do we have any dates? Uh, I don't believe we have dates yet. Okay. Okay. Nope. Those are still being uh, figured out by people. a variety of folks. All the people. Our partners. Yeah. So we'll get dates eventually, and we'll, we'll get price yep. after that. Everybody always wants to know the price as soon as possible, but that's always yeah. the last bit of info that's decided on for well, numerous reasons, really. Yep, and man, we had a whole conversation yesterday with someone uh, that was in a, a different country and was like, why is the price so different here than it is in the U.S.? And there are, guys, regions set pricing. There are a lot of reasons things might be different. But one thing I realized, and we've, I feel like we've never talked about this on stream, whenever someone asks this question, we don't include sales tax in our prices in the U.S. Oh. So when someone in Europe is like, why is it so much more expensive? Well, it is actually pretty similar it's just that you don't see that price on our bestbuy.com because it's uh sales tax varies by state it's very confusing they added a checkout look at this commanding lead by deadly quicks it's you know it, it's still anyone's marble oh oh is this a bad angle who oh, oh no he made was... it all right first wow. place deadly uh, i guess i was wrong <laughs> where's my last place cam I want to root for we're, my. We're getting there. The we're back. getting there. I don't think there's a hot key go to go faster, to last. Jake. <laughs> I don't think there's a hot key to go to last. The developers of Marble were like, "Why would anyone want that?" <laughs> oh, some some <laughs> deaths happening here. Your boy Gento, in the dumpster. Oh. Juku, Faldorian, Kane, Nemesis seem to be the slowest on the course, which is what you want to see right now. Faldorian, can you milk it? Can you, oh uh, El Rondo. Oh, oh, oh. I think it was I think it was Faldorian. Let's see. Yeah. Faldorian. You know Let's send some uh, good mojo to uh, Faldorian's way here. You're going to lose. You're going to lose hard, Faldorian. <laughs> we believe. He did it. He did it. He lost 
spectacularly. Just need you to type in chat Faldorian to claim your win. And then our first place was Deadly Quicks. GG. Congrats. Young Faldorian. So anybody below Faldorian got the did not finish. That doesn't count as last. That counts as dead. Big Ripperoni. My cat just woke up. We can get cat cam back. Oh, cat cam. He's got his own little throne that he sits on while I play video games. What a good boy. Faldorian. Where are you? You got to talk and chat, Faldorian. Tell uh, us you're here. El Rondo. Are you here? Eh? Eh? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Faldorian. Faldorian, Respond. No. We've given Respond. You, we've given you ample time. We're going. If, if El Rondo comes in, it's going to go to El Rondo. I, El Rondo's here. Faldorian. Rip. It's going to El Rondo. Congrats, El Rondo oh. Hubbard. That's... Ample time was given. El Rondo Hubbard getting that last place win. Congrats, El Rondo. That's just how we do sometimes. Um, so, guys, that is going to conclude our stream today. Tomorrow, Lane and I are going to be playing Star Citizen. He's going to be jamming it on the Scar laptop. I think he has a Scar yeah, yeah. 15. So, he's going to be playing to prove. Yeah, I think he's the Scar 17. Scar oh, he is a 17. I can't remember which one he has. Um, He's going to be jamming Star Citizen on a laptop, which means he can't do his camera, which is fine. He's going to play. No, he's going to he's going to do his camera. He's doing um I think the plan is that he's going to hook the laptop up to his his ultra wide ROG monitor. Um oh. and then use the camera from his desktop like get in the Skype call on the desktop and then switch the monitor over to the input for his laptop and play the game that way. We'll see. He asked me if he could go without webcam. And I said that's Oh, fine. okay. But <laughs> Um, either way, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out for tomorrow. Uh, at least I thought that's what he asked me. We'll, we'll confirm it. Um, we were, we were talking about options earlier today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's fine. We got plenty of stuff to show off with my secondary cam and, and otherwise showing off the whole setup is pretty cool with, with Star Citizen. The flight sticks. The flight sticks. Yeah. The foot pedal. Um, all right, guys, Eric, any, any shout outs or, or final thoughts or things you're excited for other than Factorio or V Rising? <laughs> oh, you know, I keep thinking about my uh, GPU uh, support brackets. I want that Herculex. You know, I do. That's my shout out for today. Oh, the Herculex. You want I don't it. even need it. My graphics card is perfectly straight, but I do like the Herculex. Like, I still kind of want, actually, I think I like the wing wall better. I just want the wing yeah. wall for more RGB. I, think I don't even need it. I think that's why I, I like it. my my 3080 Ti LC because it doesn't really it's not as heavy right it doesn't really need a bracket. You know, I maybe it's so maybe it depends on the card you have, but it may also depend on the motherboard. I have the 3070 Strix, which mm -hmm. is not a tiny card, no. but it is very straight, and I think it's be, probably due in part because that backplate is really solid, but also the um, you know, our good motherboards have those reinforced PCIe slots now that are just just hold up much better this is true I, my motivation is simple i built my wife a pc and every time i look at it i see the sagging gpu <laughs> there you go and it's 100 percent my fault i i cheaped out and i did not upgrade her graphics card with this build and you know i'm gonna suffer my relationship is gonna suffer <laughs> if i don't take care of this if she can't get the frames of her valheim <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right team GG's. It was fun chatting today. Guys. We'll see you next time.